go back to Kerbal for a memento. It's slightly more confusing because there are five satellites, but concentrate on the three in geosync. The other two are in geosync, but around a polar orbit. I can, as much as it is guaranteeable, because these are in geosynchronous orbit, the three going round, they're always total. Let's turn that off, then you can see, see them. They're always in communication with each other, and at least one is in communication with uh, mission control. Same with the two going round there. Because you can get them in geosynchronous orbit, it's all nice and easy and pretty much guaranteed that with three, you will have you'll be able to have communications with any remote remotely operated devices, including anything that doesn't have a Kerbal in. You can pretty much guarantee you're gonna have communications apart from at the very tippy toppies of the poles. Hence these chaps, Geosat 4 and Geosat 5. To be honest, I don't think I need them. I don't very often. I've only gone with Kerbals to the poles. Anyway, let's turn this back on. So you can see that my mission control... Let's slow that down. Okay. My mission control has, is currently talking to Kareki quite a lot on omnidirectional antennas. Uh, Geosat 4, Geosat 2... Geosat 5 and 1. 1 is providing communications to 3. Also, Geosat 2 is. This chap at the moment is talking, Geosat 4 is talking to the Mun Geosat. The Mun Geosat is all talking to each other, so they're all in communications. I found out very quickly that you have to have a, a link. It doesn't have to be line of sight, but you have to have a link to mission control when flying remotely controlled devices. Probes, rovers, etc. Not surprised, but brain didn't engage. Um, I stuck one up and thought that was enough. No, that's not going to work. So I touched on the fact that the MUN ones, the MUN, MUN, the MUN probes, the three of them were launched in one. The three geosynchronous equatorial, equa the ones that go round around the equator were all launched in one. The ones that come up onto polar orbits were launched in another one, so that's three launches to get that going. When you come out to the likes of Minimus, you have to check the range. If you grab one of the commsats, you can see all the dishes. This is the standard build. Yes, that is a big fuel tank. There's a reason for it. Well, many reasons. Um, I can't remember what it is, though. <laughs> now, I can't remember what we came to look... Oh, yes. Range. 50,000 Sorry, 50 million meters range on that commsat dish. Comms dish. Sounds really good, doesn't it? It is. That's uh, 50,000 kilometers. Mm. <laughs> good range. Very, very good range. Very good range. 50,000 kilometers. It's quite a lot. Oh, hang on a minute. That's at 46 million meters, which is just within range of that com of that comms dish. Can you see what I'm getting at? If I go back to the space center. Um, if I look at the science, the no, the science. These dishes are the relevant dishes. They're the the built-in ones. There are two omnidirectional antennas. Um, I suppose we're going to have to lob them in, aren't we? Right, uh, controls. There we go. Right. Uh, we've got 16. I'm not. Right, 16. The uh, 32. To the one, which I can't quite remember what it is. Shove that on the side. Then we have lots of these. Um, dish type things. The one that I'm using at the moment is 50 million meters. 50,000 kilometers. There are other ones. This one is 40 GM gigameters. That's quite a lot. This one's 90 million meters. 63 is that all? Oh, crikey. This effective and compact firing antenna is highly rec recommended for your research missions. 3 million meters if you look at the omnidirectional, that's 5 millimeters, the big one. The smaller one is 2.5 millimeters. The uh, Reflectatron DP10 is 500 kilometers. Ouch. 
but it's always on. You haven't got to remember to turn it on. I'll come back to that in a minute. This chap, 400 gigu things. Holy mother of god, it's ginormous. Right, welcome back. Um, I had a bit of a fiddle around with the uh, sound level, so hopefully that should be somewhat better for you. Um, we've got a mixture of dishes and antennas and stuff, which all look very good. Um, so I'll just quickly demonstrate the ranges you can get from remote tech. Oh, there's a mixture of antennas that are modified by remote tech, the default antennas that are modified and the big chap for sure in these smaller static dishes are um, remote tech as well. This gives you activate 350 gigameters. That's 350 million kilometers. This is 60 gig meters, 60 million meters. This chap, Whee! watch this, it's quite impressive. 400 million. Quite impressive. Hey look, home legs, home three meter legs, very cool. Ultra cool. Also have the small antenna. Oops. The this gives about two and a half, two point five million meters, twenty five kilometers. That one's five hundred kilometers. The advantage there is it's always on. It's very easy to take off, and then realise that you uh, once you get out of range, you haven't turned a, an area on. Splat, you've killed, <laughs> potentially killed a, a very expensive probe. Right, it's five million meters. Um, this is obviously of no use, this is just to show types of dishes. There's a tiny one on here as well, which looks horrible, but it's quite cool. And the range is only three million meters. Which is nothing when you look at the larger Communitron 32, which is 5 million meters. 